They're cool. But this frog in particular, would you like to pick up this frog? Pretty good. You can consensus this <laughs> All right, yes, he is not to be touched. He contains about 1,900 milligrams of poison on him, and it takes one to two to kill you. And so that little frog by himself is poison, can kill 10 to 20 people easily, or about 10,000 mice. We don't touch him. We don't get anywhere near him. He's terrible. But he looks cool. There's really nothing threatening about that, right? Other than he's really bright. All right, hold please, next one. How about this guy? Would you like to catch this guy? No? Have you ever touched cat going before? Little oh, inch worms? I like inch worms. They're pretty worms. Okay. But this guy, this is a giant silkworm caterpillar. If you touch him, he has got poison in him that causes brain hemorrhage. And it's also an anticoagulant. So it makes you bleed profusely internally. Not a good situation. If we don't touch him, Ever. <laughs> but he doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's just a little caterpillar. It's only, you know, big as dumb, maybe. But you look at him, maybe you wouldn't touch him. My kids probably would. They'd probably eat him. All right. <laughs> Next picture. Please. What about this one? Spiders in principle, but everybody. Animal would hold it just because. No holding the spider? No. 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 This is a sheep web spider. Completely harmless. See? From New Zealand, they don't bite people. Very rare to bite people. Their jaws can get about one centimeter in length. They're giant things. They're harmless. Completely harmless. Alright, hold it. What about this guy? Oh, would you like to touch that guy? Ah, uh, lips. Not a lips. Not a lips. Does this look like something that would just tear you up in a heartbeat? Yeah, that looked pretty gross, pretty nasty. But, he is harmless. He is a guardian. They're found in the subcontinent of India, in the rivers. They are designed to eat fish. Their jaw is built in such a way that it is fragile. And if they actually did bite you, the torque that you put on their jaw when you're moving would break their jaw because they're that fragile. They have one of the lightest bite forces of all of those species of animals. They cannot bite humans. It's not good for them. They can't bite big animals. They'll eat you if you're dead and float on the river. But they won't eat live big things because it'll break them. It'll break the jaw right now. So, what are, what are we looking at here today? All kinds of weird animals. And just by their looks, we instantaneously make some kind of judgment, right? Instantly. But, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. The rattlesnake, if you've never ever seen a rattlesnake, ever, not ever, and you saw a rattlesnake, Probably wouldn't want to touch you, but you don't know, right? Not, not, a, not, don't have the knowledge for it. This guy, same thing. If you saw him on the side of the river, you would definitely think, yeah, we're, we're gonna stay away from that. That's yeah. highly dangerous. You might get yeah. a little bit panicked, but it's fun. Not a mess with you. So what does that tell us? Our eyes deceive us, and lots of times. Just the things that we're looking at, are it's not true. Mm. Sure. In uh, Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct His paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. What I want us to think about today is just that. The things that we see, a lot of times, are deceptive. And if we don't have the ability to filter those things through God's Word and principles from God's Word, 
said a lot of times we're going to make inconsistent or wrong judgments about the things we see. Is that, is that something that you could see in your own life? Oh, yeah. Where your ways are a little different than God's ways, and His thoughts are just a touch higher than your thoughts? Come on. And some of the things that you saw were bad in your eyes, but were good in God's, yeah. or vice versa. Some yeah. of the things that were you perceived as good, God took away because they were not good. So now, that was the kid portion. So now the adults portion, we're just going to look at these pictures. And I want you to think about those things. You take the next picture at face value. And the judgments that instantly come to your mind are what I want you to think about. Go ahead, Paul. What if that guy comes up to you at about 10 o'clock at night? Okay? He's a soldier. He sacrificed his body, his face, and his looks for our freedom. So we're going to celebrate tomorrow. That's cool. What about those people? What if they came up to you? Hey, what you up to? A little chat. Do you understand what those people stand for and what yeah. kind of evil that they're in, you know, participating in? Yeah. Based on you, they look happy. Yeah. <laughs> they're fine, you know? No red flags. Next picture, Cole. Well, this guy. <laughs> a lot of this is bad decisions. A lot of this is mental health issues. A lot of this is depression. Yeah. It doesn't take very long for somebody to go to the top, from the top to the bottom, or back the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Daniel Craig, you guys probably know him as 007, right? Yeah. Yeah, he used to be homeless. Not homeless anymore, but he used to be. Next picture, Cole. What about these guys? How about they come up to you? What's the perception that you're going to have instantaneously? Yeah. Some people might be a little bit hesitant to talk to them? Maybe. Maybe not. These guys are part of the most motorcycle club uh, bikers against uh, child abuse wow. what they, is what they do. And a lot of times um, the kids when they go to court to face their abusers, they're scared because yeah. that person's hurt them. And these guys go with them yeah. and sit in court with them. Okay. Make them feel good. But looking at them face value, probably not what you're going to think. Yeah. All right, cool. That's it. There might be one more. Yeah, that's it. So I want you to think about that today. Just think about your perceptions. Think, think about the things that you judge, the, the instantaneous judgments that you make on people, on things, on situations. Make sure you're filtering those through God's Word, through yeah. God's principles. Yeah.
So uh, I'm going to read. Praise be to God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So when I was adopted, uh, I don't know, you may not know this, but when you're adopted, uh, your birth certificate changes. Uh, my name changed to Matthew Hugh. Uh, my father and mother on my birth, cer birth certificate are Pamela and Thomas Hugh. Uh, and in, in every way, my life changed to be the life that I'm living now. And in the same way, when we proclaim Jesus as Lord and we come up out of the communion waters, our lives change in every way. Um, we are adopted into, or adopted by our Father, God. We are adopted into new eternal lives. Um, we are adopted into His grace and His blessings and His, um, His, Yeah. We're, we're adopted into his his um, I don't want to say rules <laughs> into, into the life he wants us to live for him yeah. Yeah. and uh, in the same way I was adopted into a new family into a new life uh, sometimes I wonder what my life may have been like uh, if I hadn't been adopted but it's never never with wishful thinking involved because I know that the life I've been given is a gift and in the same way the lives that we get through Christ are a gift a gift that he sacrificed his life for, a gift that he hung on the cross to give us and it's it's important that we remember that when we come together to take it Let's pray. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this amazing gift that you've given us by adopting us into your grace and into your into your kingdom. Um, help us to to live our lives um, not not looking back on the sin and the fear of our past lives, but looking ahead to your glory and to your uh, to an eternity with you. Uh, please help us remember the uh, gift that Christ gave us by hanging on the cross. And please uh, help us appreciate what an amazing thing it is that we are reborn, remade through Him. All these things in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Holy Spirit, we're asking, Jesus, we are asking that you continue to move through our hearts. We heard a lot. We saw a lot of great things already in the program. Makes to think about. And I pray we would reflect, consider, and allow ourselves to be transformed a little at a time. So we can be more like you, better understand you, have a real and genuine, authentic relationship with you. Father, we are so very grateful. As we fellowship right now and then get into the word, Reggie preaching powerfully. Help us God to be wide open to whatever, whatever you want to teach us, whatever you want to show us, whatever it is you want us to know. Thank you for each and every soul. Every person is a soul. Every person has a soul. Every person here in the room right now, every person on the live stream, let us all be impacted by your greatness, God. It is all about you. Glorifying you is all about you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
purse or your pinch pocket or some fucking bread in your wallet, whatever you need to do. But uh, grab those big goods and come on back in here. Come on back in, come on back in. It's like herding kids. But it's the best part of the world. The belly chip is the best part. It's the best part. All right. So we're going to sing one more song. We're going to sing one more song. So go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and stand up. We're going to sing one more song. And then I'm going to introduce our guest speaker today. All right, all right. Welcome back to some aggressive fellowship. That's not so bad. Yeah, we're going to do more aggressive singing. Cupcakes, we're right here. An aggressive lesson. Cupcakes, big good stuff. Part two, 
to us, how much I love God, and hope that you leave here today impacted by His love. I'm going to tell you what happened. As, uh, as Alex and um, uh, Matthew were speaking, I started smiling, and I was talking to G, my wife, a little bit, because I kept saying things like, oh, that's perfect. That fits right in with what I'm saying. And you guys will notice that God, the more you experience it, that's what it is. It's all about an experience. Yeah. That different people will say different things at different times that are all really saying the same thing. So, yeah. so Alex, Matt, and I didn't convene before you know we talked about this. Alex used a scripture from Proverbs, which is written by Solomon. Maybe uh, 700, 800 BC, don't quote me on that. I didn't study that part for uh, my sermon today. Now you just heard it from Ephesians, written by the Apostle Paul. Okay? That's probably written sometime around 50, 60 AD. Okay? I'm going to use the scripture from 2 Peter. Okay? Peter is a different person. Okay? Also probably written around I don't know, 50, 60 AD. All saying some of the same things about this saying God. Okay. And I smile because those three men that wrote those things, Alex, Matt, and I have taken what they wrote and we're getting the same exact things out of it. And it's all an experience of this same God. Okay. So, we're going to start in 2 Peter 1. That is where we're going to work from. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Now when I, when I read the Bible, I notice repetitions and patterns. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but twice in this passage, the word given is used. Okay? Given. God in his essence is a giver. He's the giver. I don't know, and I could be wrong, I spent a lot of time in the Bible. I don't see very many instances or any at all of something saying that God took. God's not a taker. And I think, I don't know if there's one person or everyone needs to hear this today, God doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. Acts 17, which is a, a popular scripture that we talk about in the ICOC, where Paul is talking, I believe, to people in Athens. He says, God is the creator of heaven and earth, everything in it, but he doesn't live in temples made by human hands as if he needed it. Yeah. He doesn't need us. Yeah. But I think sometimes we get that in our head. Well, what, what does God want from me? Am I not doing enough for him? Why, why does he want me to give up stuff for him? What does he want from me? We're all in that place sometimes. What does he want? Nothing. He doesn't want nothing. It's not proper grammar. Nothing from us. Okay? He wants to give to us. Twice in this passage. Given. Let me say this again. He wants nothing from us. He wants everything. He's given us everything we need. He wants everything for us and with us. Yeah. And I say it again. He wants nothing from you as individuals. Nothing from you. He wants something for you and with you. Okay? For and with. Not from. He's a giver. God in and of himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, for the creation of the world. Jesus talks about it in John 17. Father, the love that you and I have always had, I want everyone to have. I want you to have that. That was his prayer. They were content, satisfied, full of joy, peace. God has that in himself. So you ask me, Reggie, okay, if he has everything he needs, why did he create us? Why does he give us, why does he give us all these commands? I laugh when, when Matthew mentioned rules and and he paused, right, for about five seconds. He's like, 
you know, God gives us, I don't want to say rules. And he said, no, it's the life he wants to give us. Right? right. Whole life. Because the rules and the commands are a means to an end. Guys, we can't get locked up in the means. The commands and the rules, they are to get us to an end. He says, don't burn. Or we, say, we tell our kids, don't touch the hot stove. The commands for the purpose of us staying healthy, right? Yeah. God is the same way. Yeah. And if you don't think that today, again, walk in here today with that mindset, I'm trying to drive that point home to you. <laughs> Come on, brother. He doesn't need you. He wants something for you. Okay? Amen. We need that for the rest of what I'm saying. Okay? I'll tell you what it's like. My wife, my beautiful wife and I are about to have a baby, right? We're talking about it. Stand up. Same thing. Okay? For Kobe, 
being in all the basketball circles that I've been over the years, there's a story about when Kobe played for the Olympic team. So he's playing with some of the other best athletes in the world, right? LeBron, Kevin Durant, if you don't know these names, catch up, ask me after. <laughs> some of the best basketball players to ever grace the planet, right? They said there was one practice, I don't know the times, it was very early though, maybe 7, 8 a.m. These guys walk in the gym together, the lights are already on. They can see it from the outside. They're like, what's going on? Like, why are the lights already on? They go in there and Kobe is working, probably at 4 a.m., like this quote said. He's already been in there working on the sweat. Sweat's dripping on the ground, okay? <laughs> they come in, they're like, what, what are you doing? He's like, I've been working out. I'm in here practicing. Now I'm ready to go for practice. His pre-practice was a couple hours before all the other great players in the world showed up. Wow. Okay? That's Kobe. Yeah. It wasn't, it was a lifestyle. It's what he did, okay? And that produced greatness, right? Five NBA titles, the epitome of his craft, one of the best players to ever play the game. When verse four says that through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature. What God is saying, it would be as like Kobe saying, come work out with me, come live life with me, come see how I am the way I am and what is produced. And you can be that too. I want you to be that too. That's what it's like. If you're an artist, it's like Michelangelo saying, hey, wow. come live life with me. Like wow. Okay, come, I'll show you, I'll teach you how to, to do this hand. You can do your own Sistine Chapel. Okay? Whatever profession you are, you guys can do the analogies. You see what I'm you see what I'm crafting here. That's what God is inviting us into. And if we're not excited about that, it's because we don't we don't really know his glory. We don't really know who he is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? It's true. It's true. Think about if Kobe invited you. I actually have a story like this. 2018, I've been very open about this. I've shared it many times. It was a very hard year for me. But it was the year that I made the NBA top of the world, 2018. Oh, oh, Two-way two player. I'm doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I spent five days, actually six days, in the mental hospital, February 21st to February 22nd, 27th of 2018. It was, I was in one of the worst moments of my life. As I got out of that and recovered from it, at the end of the year, at the end of the season, Sometime around April, we as a team, the Detroit Pistons, meeting in the film room, talking about going into next year. And Blake Griffin, you guys know Blake Griffin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Five-time All-Star, one of the best athletes to ever grace the game. He's my teammate at the time. He says to everybody in the room, if you guys want to come out and uh, train with me in my house in Los Angeles during the summer so we can get better, get ready for next year, my house is open. So I've been having a really rough time. I didn't really know where I was going to be training at the time, so I hit him up at the end of the season. I said, is that offer still open? He said, yes. I had to pay for my flight, but that's it. Wow. wow. I got to LA, he had a big old black Suburban, okay, waiting for me. I thought it was his, he rented it, okay? <laughs> I could drive that the whole time I was there. Wow. Wow. I had a room in his basement in his house. There's a movie theater. I watched a movie by myself, The Mask, Jim Carrey. Nice. <laughs> Irrelevant. The classic. I'm just taking you guys a picture. <laughs> Beyond that, every day, I'm up in the morning with him. His chef is making us breakfast. I sit with him at the table. We get to know each other a little bit. After breakfast, we go to the gym. We work out. We're in the weight room, okay? I'm doing everything that his trainer is having him do. Wow. I'm doing it. Wow. Then we go to the gym, okay? Now, when you have that level of money, okay, there's a little more resources available. So oh. he's got a main trainer, and then there's a lot of maybe college guys who we run through all sorts of different drills, five or six guys on the court, wow. okay? All these resources, and I just get to be there and be a part of it. Wow. Wow. Lady strong on me, okay? This is what it's like to be an NBA player. This is what it takes. Okay? Nice. And I'm just there. <laughs> I just get to be a part of it. Right? Yeah. Amazing stuff. He invited me to participate in his nature, who he is, what he's about, mm -hmm. how, how, he, 
has become such a great player. I'm, I'm, I, I get to be a part of it. Oh. Wow. God invites us into that. That's right. Yeah. Y'all still with me, man? This is good. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. Been, it's been burning in me for a few days. There are specific ways that God wants to share His life, His mama mentality, His 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 house and His trainers and all these different things. All right. I'm going to focus on a few of them, and ironically, it's another way that God has brought things together. The song we sang earlier today talks about the gospel. Gospel in the word is love. Gospel in the word is joy. The gospel in the word, word is peace. And lo and behold, those were the things that I was going to talk about today. Isn't that interesting? Spirit, spirit. Spirit. Let's go back to verse 2. We're still in the second Peter passage. Verse 2. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Yeah. As you guys know, in 18 of the 27 books of the New Testament, it starts off with some sort of phrase like that, grace and peace be yours. Yeah. But here it says in abundance. Sometimes it says grace, mercy, and peace. Sometimes it says grace, peace, and love. But two-thirds, and in James, and I believe the other one, I don't remember at the moment, it uses some other variation that essentially implies, I want you to be well off in everything, in your soul. Yeah. Okay? God begins, before we get to all the other commands in 2 Peter, all the commands that Paul gets to in his letters, the first thing he says is, I want grace and peace. I want you to have that. The first thing. Do we feel that? Like mm. Grace, by the way, the Greek word has the same root as the word that we translate as joy. Grace and joy are bound up together. Grace essentially means that which imparts joy to the giver when you receive it. You receive a gift, you receive favor, and it brings you joy. So grace, joy, peace. These are the things that God wants to give you, and before he starts giving you a whole bunch of commands, he lets you know in almost every letter in the New Testament. God, you guys feel that? Like when you spend time with God, you feel like he wants to give you these things? His nature, because he has them. He says, I want you to have them in abundance. Jesus, this is what, this is probably the one thing that fascinates me most about Jesus Christ. So, he knows, right, throughout his life, especially at the end of his ministry, that he is about to die at the hands of the Romans, the worst death possible. Yeah. Excruciating, actually, is a word yeah. that, that came from the cross. In a pain to the level of the cross. Krush, the root, means cross. It was excruciating. They had to come up with a new word to describe the level of pain that Jesus dealt with. Okay, and that's his physical pain. He's dealing with the emotional pain of all his disciples leaving, the mental pain, the separation from his father that we talk about he had always had before we were ever here. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, before we were ever even a thought. They had this love, they had this bond, they had this intimacy together. He loses that. But as he is about to do that, John 13 through 17 basically takes you through these long discourse of everything that Jesus tells his disciples before he goes through all this immense pain. And what is he doing during that time? He's, he's comforting them. Yeah. Yeah. In John 14, 27, he talks about my peace. I'm telling you these things. My peace, I want my peace to be with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give as the world gives. Exactly. I right. give you real stuff. That's right. Right. That's right. I don't give you the fillers mm-hmm. and the preservatives. That's right. I give you the real organic vegetables. <laughs> 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 John 15, 11. He's telling the disciples, follow my commands so you can remain in my love so that my joy may be in you. Oh, it makes me sit down like, he's like, what do you mean your joy? Like, you're about to go to the cross. Like, these dudes you're talking to are about to leave you. Yeah. What do you mean I'm telling you these things so that your joy could be in them? It didn't make sense to me. But he had it, right? He had a real joy. It was unaffected by circumstances. Yeah. Happiness coming from the same root as the word happenstance. Like whatever happens to be going on is going to determine whether I feel good or not. 
That's right. It ain't like that for Jews, regardless of circumstance. Joy. Come on. I got it. Peace, joy. No matter the circumstances. You guys, you guys want that? I want that. Yeah. No matter what's going on here. Like Kyle always talks about this. Up here. Yeah, okay. I can get the life that he has, yeah. that he had even when he's going to his crucifixion. I can have joy and peace. His joy and peace, regardless of what I'm going through. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Love. The last thing that Jesus recorded in his prayer when he's in Gethsemane, John 17, verse 26. Jesus is saying, Father, the love that you and I had. He actually says, before the creation of the world, I want all believers for all time to have. As he's about to go to the cross and there's going to be separation from him and the Father, I want you, I want them to have that love. Uh, joy, peace, and love. Just a few of the things. Just a few. Just a few that he wants to give you of his nature. Yeah, come on. We can have life, guys. Like this is real life, not not based off the happenstance, not based off where I live or, or what shows I get to go to or when the last vacation was that I had or what's what, what's going on over here and over there. What that person's doing. All that guy got a call up to the NBA and I did. Yeah. Regardless of all that, right. regardless of circumstance, regardless of the circumstance of death, I didn't even talk about the resurrection. But he's saying my nature, death can't even can't even like penetrate that. I'll give you life forever. You guys want that? I don't know if I feel what you want that. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. So 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 how do we how do we respond to this? If you if you really want it. Yes. Let's go to Isaiah 55. I love, yeah. I love this stuff. You knew where I was going, Kyle? Yeah. 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 Alex talked about this earlier. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But we're gonna start in verse one. Isaiah fifty-five. It says, verse one, Isaiah fifty-five. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why? Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight. Remember the promises of 2 Peter verse 3 that we were just at? Through these very great and precious promises, your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give here and come to me, hear me, that your soul may what? Live. live. Really live. Yes. Really live. Amen. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. God says, come. It's like, Here's what it's like. You know, God, is, he, he's talked about as a, as a fire, right? What does fire give you? It gives you warmth. If I want to be warm, I should probably get close to the fire. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe not too close. Right. That, that's a discussion for another time. Yeah. <laughs> but if I want to have a mama mentality, and the mama invites me into his space and says, here's how you do it. That's how I get it. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get close yeah. to it. How close are you getting to God? Are you showing up where He's at? Because He wants to give you all these things. And he just says they're right here. You guys seen? You guys seen Black Panther? Yeah. yeah. So Wakanda, right, is a is a city. It's a kingdom where they have way more resources than the rest of the world, especially probably compared to where it's located in Africa. And this is all fiction, right? But if I want to, to have all these resources, if I want to be having prosperity, real prosperity, then you have to go, you have to go in what kind of that's kind of what it's like. It's like God, I have this space where I can offer you life. You have to come to the space. Right. Yeah. Are you coming to the space? 
outside of the space, outside of Wakanda, there's poverty, right? Yeah. The rest of the world doesn't have the technology, the advancements, they, they, they can't live as full of a life. Yeah. Right? Right. Jesus wants to give you life to the full. Yeah. You gotta go to Wakanda. Yeah. Right. Come. Uh -huh. So, come, buy, and eat. Here's the thing about buying. When you buy something, you're exchanging, right? I, I give you money, you give me this, right? So with God, He wants you to give your to basically give your time. Come come to Him. Yeah. And we have, if we go back to 2 Peter 1, at the end it said there's corruption in the world caused by these evil desires, right? Whatever desires you have, that is at the core of who you are. That's that's really at the core of everything that has gone wrong in this world, right? There's good desires and there's bad desires. God is asking you to talk to him about those desires, give them to him. Okay? And then Psalm 37, delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. But the real desires. Money is not what we want. We want the security that money has. Right? You know. Sex is not really what we want outside of marriage. It's the intimacy that you can have yeah. with another individual. Yeah. The love, the value. Somebody wants me. Yeah. Right? Those are means to an end, but they don't give you the real end. Right. And God is saying, Isaiah 55, again, come buy wine. I like my wine, man. <laughs> my wife loves it more. <laughs> the, it gives you contentment, right? The wine, like everything is, everything is good. God has that and he has it for real. Yeah, right. Okay? Yeah. Milk will help you grow, nourish you. God has nourishment. God will help you grow. Why are we spending our money on what is not worth it? And you're laying on what doesn't really satisfy. My wife and I went to Germany last year. We were only there for a month. Okay? We ate bread every day. <laughs> and because of my ankle injury at the time, I wasn't really working out that much. When we came back, I lost five pounds. We were eating whatever we want over there, but they don't put bad stuff in their food. Stuff that's not really bread. The fillers, preservatives. What are your fillers and preservatives? The things that you go to to nourish you and they really don't. The things that, the, say what? The things that, they're actually giving you high blood pressure. And they're giving you, they're giving you diabetes and all these things. Yes, yep. You don't give your kid, you don't let your kid have ice cream, you know, every meal. Right. Why? Because it's not really good for them. Right. It's, just, it's a filler. It doesn't really fill your appetite. When I'm thirsty, I need water. I don't need Gatorade. Right. right. I don't need fruit juices and all those things. Right. Right? God is offering us real bread, real labor, real satisfaction, real jewel, real delight. That's right. Okay. Almost done. <laughs> Verse 2. He talks about listen to me. Listen. Eat what is good. Your soul delight in the riches of bear. Hear me that your soul may live. And fast forward a little bit to verse 8. Actually, sorry, let's go to verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Still in Isaiah 55. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Exchange. Buy. Buy what God has and get rid of your wickedness and evil desires that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Mm -hmm. I'm where Alex was, right? Mm -hmm. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts, right? Here's where I want to start emphasizing things. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sour, 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 uh, and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish, will, promise, will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. And what is the result of coming to the world? He says in verse 2 and 3, come, buy, listen to me, eat what is good. 
the word, come to it. The word will produce this right here. Jesus, the living word. <coughs> Isaiah 56, if you went over, verse 7, says, I will give them joy in my house of prayer. Okay? Kai goes and prays three hours. That's amazing. Three hours all the time, okay? And he said, I, I'm no longer nourished by things of the earth here as much. He's addicted to prayer with God. Why? Right? Because it's really feeling him. That's right. Yeah. Really feeling him. That's right. Joy in the house of prayer. Here in the word, where God's people gather, where God shows up. Okay, we come there, he gives us his life. What is the result? Verse 12, you will go out in joy. I promise, you will. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. What's mountains bursting in the song? What's field trees clapping their hands? To me, that just means you will really come to life. You'll yeah. really start seeing things for how they really are. Like Kai said, when we go out there, he said this in a sermon a couple weeks ago, and you see the mountains, we'll go and look at the Sistine Chapel and be like, who made that? Sometimes we go out here, we look at mountains, and we look at the ocean, and we're not awestruck. Somebody made that stuff. That's right. Somebody made it. Yeah. Who is that? That's God. You'll start, life will start coming to you in a different way. Okay? You'll start seeing things differently. This is what God has to offer us. Yeah. All right? Last thing. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I'm going to end in Revelation. Why? Because this is the last book of God's word that we have. One of the last things that he says. You don't have to go there unless you want to. There's Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Come on, brother. The Spirit, that's God, and the bride, his church, all of us say, come. And let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Come, go, go, three times. Yeah. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Okay? Prayer, the word, everywhere where God is, come. He will give you joy, grace, mercy, peace, faithful love, promise to David, all these things. You, There's fillers out there that you can get it a little bit from, but you can't get it like God gives it to you. And it's a promise that if you come, he'll give it to you. He's not promising it won't be hard, right? How many, how many Notebook fans do I have out here? That movie, The Notebook. <laughs> I said all this to you. God is, is, he's not begging in the sense that he needs you, but he's like, y'all just come to me. I got some stuff for you guys. Come on. Come on in. I got some stuff. More than what you can find out there. Come to me. But he says, just as uh, Noah says to Allie in the notebook, Ryan Gosling says to Rachel McAdams, she's like, so, like, so what? How are we going to do this? He says, so it's not going to be easy. It's going to be really hard. We're going to have to work at this thing every day, but I want to do that because I want you. I want all of you forever, you and me, every day. God says that to you. That's right. Every day he wants that, and he wants to keep giving and giving. He's not taking it. He doesn't need anything. That's right. Let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you for this time to be with you. Thank you for this uh, message that, that you gave to me. God, thank you for just being a giver. <laughs> thank you for not eating us, but wanting us. And I pray for all of us, whether whether we have known you or not really known you, whether we have committed to you or not quite committed to you yet, there's always more that you have to give. And you want to give it to us. Joy. Real joy. Peace. Real peace. Real life. Love. All the things that we really want deep inside, Father. Like I said, we don't really want money. We want what money can provide. What we think is security. And that goes for most of our desires, Father. You are the end. Your commands, your know, rules, as, as Matt talked about, they are means to an end. Help us to see that you're trying to give us something. Help us to let go, to come buy your wine and milk, God, and to let go of those things that, that don't really fill us. 
the preservatives, Father. Thank you so much for who you are and everything you offer us, God. Amen. Come out and connect. Great to have you. Have a great rest of your